On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 2008. We're going to be taking a look at Foo Fighters and they're going to be performing Learn to Fly. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. Thank you guys for all of the requests for this particular video following the sad news that Taylor Hawkins passed away recently. We're going to be taking a look at him, Dave and the guys performing back in 2009 and I am going to be isolating drums or at least bringing down levels of other instruments so that we can have a listen to Taylor's playing a little bit more clearly. So if you want to listen to the original performance, as always, there's a link in the description below. Let's jump into it. This could take all night Think I need a devil to help me get things right Hook me up a new revolution Cause this one is a lie We sat around laughing and watched the last one die I'm just going to jump in here because the main thing that stands out to me with Taylor's playing and something that just stands out straight away when you're listening to any drummer is that foot pedal and how solid it is and it's great that we can isolate the different instruments in live performances now and we can listen to Taylor's playing a little bit more clearly. Another thing to point out is that when you're playing drums for Foo Fighters, you cannot hold back because the guy that <laughs> knows exactly how it should go and how it should feel is at the front of the stage. And you really got the impression that Dave, I mean, not a lot of people know or they fail to appreciate that Foo Fighters is a solo project. It is Dave Grohl and that's how he started doing it. Just playing everything himself in the studio, applying the vocals, then releasing an album and then when you go on tour obviously you have to get session musicians in to play the instruments. So it is very much that solo effort from Dave Grohl but it's just called Foo Fighters but as the years progressed, obviously you're going to get to know the band members if you are a fan of the overall sound of the band and Dave Grohl. But you really got the impression with Taylor that David found a drummer that he really connected with. And when I say that, I mean it on lots of different levels because you can have a session guy that comes along and Taylor, before he got together with Dave and started playing with Foo Fighters, he was very much playing for other bands. Alanis Morissette, I think, was in there. But he was doing that session player thing of just moving from one band to the next, one project to the next. When he got up and <laughs> played with Foo Fighters, you get the impression that Dave really connected with him on a professional level, which is really important on uh, an instrumental level, of course, with Dave being uh, that expert at drums himself. He knew exactly what he was looking for in a drummer, but on a personal level as well, which is something that you've got to throw into the mix when you're talking about playing day in, day out on tour and being on a tour bus with other musicians. You've got to find guys that you get on with. And it might be the case that you are in a band or you get these guys along for your solo project when you play live that you don't get on with and that's going to make it really difficult playing live due to the fact that Taylor was first of all in Foo Fighters in 1996 I believe maybe 1997 but he then stayed for the duration you can tell that they got on and when I say getting on professionally 
it's having an, a, a professional attitude that is going to help you to get on as people as well. And you can tell that Dave and Taylor just linked in. They were just two peas in a pod. And especially if you are hiring someone that plays your instrument that you very much have spent your lifetime and uh, getting down, practicing and becoming an expert of, you want to find somebody that is going to play the drums how you want them to be played. And Taylor certainly was that person. So we're going to listen from the start again. This time I have muted Dave's lead vocal. It's good to have it in there so you know where you are in the song. But I've taken that out just so we can have a listen to the rhythm section. Because for live, this is make or break. Your drums and bass have got to be tight. They've got to be on the same page. They are the foundation of the live performances, but in the studio as well, it has got to be solid. So let's have a listen to this. And I know that we do have this snare that is full out all the time and that foot pedal in there, again, really solid. The thing to listen out for is the way that we then close this hi-hat in the verse. We are laying into that snare and Taylor's just playing this 110%. You can't play Foo Fighters songs any other way, especially with Dave Grohl in the band. You've just got to let it all go and Taylor just lays into that kit on that snare. But listen to the way that when we get into the verse, we've now got this closed hi-hat sound and spend less time on the hi-hat. And obviously for the intro and for the chorus, we then open up that hi-hat. But there is still a lot going on dynamically. Listen out for the foot pedal as well during the verse because Taylor lightens up on that. And you'll just start to see this with great bands, when you're watching them live, they are so appreciative of dynamics. Even in a song like this, where it is just full out pretty much the whole time, but in the verses, we go to these clean open string chords. Another thing that Dave Grohl does so well with his compositions is getting this guitar to ring out so well using open string chords rather than just going to bar chords all the time he regularly leaves open the high e string the b string on the guitar and the g sometimes so he'll just play a fifth on that low e string a string and d string and let the g the b and the e like i've just mentioned ring out get some really nice voicings of chords but let's just have a listen to this transition dynamically from the intro into the verse So we've gone for that open hi-hat on the one, two, three, four, the ch 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 You'll be getting that all through the intro and the chorus, but now we're into your closed hi-hat and just releasing it and more emphasis now on the offbeat. So not straightforward, really cool groove in here. And obviously that's the way that Dave wants it, but it gives you that light and shade between the intro and the verse. It means that the snare, rather than coming in on two and four of the bar, when we go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, we come in on two and three and. So if you're going one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four, it means that we're going one, one, <laughs> one, two, three and four. And the and between the three and the four is where that snare is coming in. So it's going one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. So that and. So that's why it feels like it's just taking you by surprise because you are expecting it on the four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. So this is just changing the groove. It'll have that effect on you that you're not expecting it, but that's the point. It's almost like putting a block in the way that you're tripping over. I mean, it's very much, if you just relate to rhythm as walking, 
It's like taking even steps and then you catching your foot halfway through a step. So it's almost that kind of stutter that you have, which is very much what it sounds like because that's exactly what's happening. Even if you don't know anything about music or playing the drums or beats and bars, your brain will take this information in and it'll make you feel a particular way. And that's exactly why you have these kind of things going on in the verse compared to the chorus, just changing it up to give you something a bit different, to get you to feel differently about the verse. But we'll jump back into where we left it and we'll have the whole track going now. You can wait one night Give it all away if you give me one last try and we live happily ever trapped If you just save my life Run into the ages of everything oh, oh! Look into the sky to see me Looking for the sign of light Looking for something to help me burn out good Looking for a complication just going to jump in here because from a technical standpoint it's interesting to see that dave has four fold back speakers and these are in front of where he's singing so I think these two generally he's going to have his voice coming back at him and maybe a little mix of drums, guitars, however he wants that. But we've got four. So you can see that this one here, this is just slightly out to the side. This might be just a cover when he moves away from the microphone. You'll notice as well how, I mean, we've got fold back all the way across. So it means that the bassist will have a mix of his bass just being played at him. He'll have a mix of the whole track or all of the other instruments, but generally he'll probably have a great deal of Taylor's drums coming out of this so that he can lock into it and he'll have a particular level of his bass in that sound as well. And then second guitar we've got over here and we've got another fold back here which might be for potentially Dave if he goes to an acoustic guitar for a particular number there might be a different setup there which means, I mean, that might be why he's got the foot pedals here as well. But I'm just having a look whether we've got foot pedals or we've got set lists. I mean, this is a cool angle because we get to see the set lists. They've been written down and Dave doesn't have the lyrics on a screen at the front of the stage. I mean, he wouldn't have that anyway because he's to rock and roll for it, but you'll see that a lot of the time that you'll have monitor screens. These are just foldback speakers, but you'll have monitor screens that have the lyrical content of the song that a lot of performers read from, uh, but it's hidden from the audience, obviously. And you can see that Taylor's got the same foldback, so his drums and a great deal of bass will be played through that as well just so that he can lock in with Nate, um, and it's Nate Mendel here on bass. But let's jump back into the performance.
And there we have it. I mean, listening to some of those fills, I'm just going to take it back and we will get rid of the guitar and the vocals because when you're listening to some of these fills, I mean, just rock solid the whole way through. And this is another huge thing, keeping tempo. Because if this was too slow, you'd lose the energy. Of course, if it was too fast, it would uh, probably have too much energy. But then you're asking Dave Grohl to sing even faster. The lyrics have got to be squeezed into a smaller space because you're speeding up. So his tempo is just spot on throughout. And it's just great to listen to. But we'll listen to it a bit more. I love that two bar fill that we get as well. I'm not sure whether I'll be able to find it, but I mean, it is all just so solid. It's a little bit before that thing. And there we have it. The other thing is that Taylor just looks great behind the drum kit because he's enjoying himself. And when you see someone enjoying themselves, you just get into it even more. And it's a huge part having the personality because you could just sit, well, not in Foo Fighters, um, Dave, this is the point, Dave wouldn't put up with somebody just sitting there and playing everything technically correctly, but not actually getting into it or looking like they're enjoying themselves. So it's great to have a look at this kind of performance, but Taylor always did this, just gave it 110%. But thank you guys for requesting this video for tonight. Certainly not the circumstances under which I'd want to feature Foo Fighters on the channel again, but thoughts and prayers to Taylor's family and friends during this very difficult time, and I will catch you guys at the next one.